Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Microsoft Operations Management Suite, Insight and Analytics. My name is Hannah Westra, and I will be moderating today's session. Um, first of all, before we get started, um, this is actually part three, not part four. So we will be having um, three more sessions, two more, two more sessions, thank you, Chris, um, after today's. Um, so keep posted for those invitations and we'll um, send those dates out to you. Um, and also there's just a few housekeeping items before I hand it over to Chriselda. Uh, today's webinar is being recorded and will be available to you after the session. We will also send out the previous recordings um, of the uh, parts prior to this webinar. Uh, so you have all three recordings available to you. If you have any questions during today's session, you can enter them in the question box um, throughout. Uh, we want to make this interactive. Or if you prefer to um, hold them to the end, we will be having a Q&A session. So whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and then also, uh, again, we'll just send up a follow-up webinar um, with the, the uh, recording of today's sessions and uh, the subsequent, subsequent sessions as well. Um, so at this time, I'm going to hand it over to Chris Shalda. Thanks, right. Chris. Thanks, Hannah. All right, so welcome, everybody. Uh, hopefully, you were able to join us for a couple, the first couple parts that we had, which is an overview of the operations management suite, just in general, hybrid uh, cloud management and how Microsoft provides that. And then the second part we did was on uh, Azure Backup and Azure Site Recovery, which is part of the OMS suite. So today, we're going to be getting into one of the other four pillars of what's included with OMS, which is insight and analytics. So just real quick about me. Um, I am Chris Aldo. I am a, I work at so Cortex Services and I am the Microsoft Solutions Architect. So I work a lot with all different types of cloud technologies Microsoft provides from Azure to Office 365, Windows 10, Enterprise Mobility Security, and various others as well, um, and help customers to put together holistic solutions end to end um, that will work for them and their needs and requirements. So um, have a lot of conversations with lots of customers about modern management these days, whether that's on the endpoint or on the server side. And there's just a lot of great tools and technologies out there. So hopefully today you'll see that how OMS can fit into that story as well for your hybrid cloud management. You can reach me. Uh, I have my email address there or on Twitter. If you want to follow me or uh, ask me any questions directly there, feel free to do so. So today, I'm just going to kind of go over the modern hybrid cloud management story. This is a small overview on recap. And then we'll get into the OMS insight and analytics piece where we'll dive into the simple and unified experience, how you can gain immediate insight, and then how you can do fast troubleshooting and auto remediation. So let's start here. So first, just here's some ideologies, as it says, for um, shifting investments, which is really what we're seeing is a lot of organizations are taking this, starting to put a, you know, at least dipping their toe into the cloud, let's say, and moving their investments over to the cloud because it makes a lot of sense in a lot of business cases where there's you know, increased speed um, from in terms of setup time. There's not nothing to truly implement as far as servers is concerned. A lot of times these are services, so a very quick time to value. Um, Real-time innovation, there's a lot of flexibility to connect to your existing tools, to your on-prem solutions, and the cloud solutions, modern solutions, as well as it brings a lot of simplicity with really dashboards that are easy to use and really reducing a lot of the infrastructure while having a solution that's really integrated with everything that you're trying to manage. But the thing is, there are a lot of challenges that IT organizations face when they're looking at modern management. You have this traditional world, with all these traditional systems that require traditional management, typically, right? On-prem, your own data center, colo, something like that. And now we have this cloud model that seems completely different. And no longer is a server the focal point of infrastructure and management, it's now a lot of services are wrapped around and, and sometimes it's hard to get our heads around. Well, how do I how do I bring this new model to bear 
we're not going to be 100% cloud tomorrow. We're going to be somewhere in between. Honestly, I expect many customers to be somewhere in between um, in, in the, the cloud, you know, the traditional world and the cloud world. So we have to find some way to tie these together. And where this all kind of, we have to address all of these areas here in all of our modern IT investments, right? So everywhere from governance, you know, building something, configuring it, making sure that it's constantly working, it's patched. Um, there's automation behind there. You have to monitor, make sure it continues to work, protect it in case of disasters or corruption, or, you know, so you need to restore something. Securing that, that's another big piece now too, and we'll, we'll get to that a little deeper in a later session. And then, you know, governing that. So there's this life cycle here that we have to consider all these pieces. And what I believe Microsoft's done is a great job of tying all of this together in at least OMS, as well as a couple other solutions that they provide um, to give you this holistic story, this holistic management story. So here um, from, this is kind of the model, and this is very high level, right? So the hybrid management this is how Microsoft does this with Microsoft Operations Management Suite kind of in the middle there that's tied to your existing on-premise workloads, maybe with System Center, doesn't have to be. Um, it does add some additional capabilities, but doesn't have to be. And then as well, a public cloud, whether that's Azure or and AWS, uh, as well as private or hosted third-party clouds. So being able to tie all these pieces together in a single place is where we're going with this. And that just kind of gives you an overview of all those pieces that all come together and to create what the benefits of operations management suite are. So today, we're going to tie into this insight and analytics piece. And it really provides operational excellence so with insights and analytics, starting with a simple and unified experience. So let's dig into that. Really, the challenges today is that you have an you know, on-premises data center or data centers, right, with all sorts of data that you're maybe collecting already, whether that's across your applications, platforms, networks, security, especially these days. And you have all these different tools that are typically siloed in one form or another from, you know, your, your, your security event monitor is, is looking at security events, then you also have a, a network monitoring tool that's looking at all your switching and networking, but then you also have a separate tool for your applications. And then you, you say, you know, that maybe that works sort of well today, it's not too complicated, but now you have this, you're getting into the cloud, right, and you're, there's many options, maybe you're even using multiple options. Some companies, you know, use multiple clouds um, for different workloads, and you might have Azure, Amazon Web Services, Google, other hosters, but each one of them has their own individual monitoring typically. And so you add that on, it just adds so much complex complexity and it's hard to tie all this together in one place. So you're actually spending a lot more time operationally trying to get these insights and understand how to just continue to manage this, all of your workloads in a modern way. So what Microsoft has done here is they've created a single pane of control to gain those insights across multiple different sources and solutions. And hopefully we can kind of illustrate that today. So to begin with, it's a single platform for a single pane of glass really for the control and insights into all of this data and a unified experience. Uh, this can connect basically for Configuration, automation, monitoring, protecting, and security. And you can leverage those existing management platforms. You don't have to rip and replace these systems. Um, you, these could be systems like System Center, Operations Manager, right? Uh, Zabbix, Nagios, those types of solutions where those can integrate directly into an operation management suite. And there's other options as well where it may not be a directly integrated solution or it's an isolated environment where it's hard to get this data into the cloud where it can be analyzed, there's options such as like an OMS gateway that can forward these, uh, this information out or just forwarding custom logs directly from other uh, third-party systems that don't directly integrate. As well, you will get access anywhere with a consistent user experience. So this is, we'll get into that a little bit more, but it's, I mean, it's an HTML-based uh, management console, so any browser, any device, and it's consistent across all those devices. There's even a mobile application that you can use to get some kind of immediate insights into some of that information, that data. 
for in that mobile application for iPhone, Android, and Windows Phone. So getting into the single platform for that overall management, um, we kind of show you how that all comes together. So this is kind of that broad view here of all those different, let's say, inputs into operations management suite where pulling logs, pulling events, pulling information into OMS, could be from Windows agents um, directly, could be from System Center Operations Manager, that's kind of working as in some ways as a gateway from Linux devices, REST API, SaaS services like Office 365, even directly from Azure Storage or Azure Diagnostics where you can forward logs there and it can pull from that um, storage repository, Event Hub, Logstash. So those, that's just an idea and shows you how just ubiquitous this is. And really when you look at REST APIs, that means that pretty much all modern monitoring systems are using REST APIs. So you can really tie in almost everything these days. And some of those ideas, some kind of samples of what those logs are, and it really could be any logs and custom logs if you wanted to, but um, you know, application logs, infrastructure logs, Windows event logs, performance, IIS, security event logs. So kind of sky's the limit in, in a way. It's no pun intended. <laughs> I mean, it is, I don't know. Uh, so getting into a little deeper, Windows agents, right? So they can talk directly to operations management suite. Um, it's just an agent that's uh, it's called this MMA agent, Microsoft Monitoring Agent, which gets installed on the Windows device, you know, Windows server, and then forwards those events directly to the OMS service. Um, nothing necessarily needed in between to do that. You just have to have the proper firewall parts open to have that outbound connection. And then there's so SCOM, so uh, System Center Operations Manager is a popular tool that a lot of um, organizations are using these days, which is a great monitoring tool for your on-prem workloads um, and collects all that information already and you already are pushing out agents to your devices. So what you can do is tie this in operations management suite and get additional insights beyond what you can even get with, with the SCOM and have additional analytics on that and tying that together with all those other monitoring platforms. That, you know, sometimes you just SCOM doesn't tie in very well with some third party management um, platforms or monitoring platforms, and it can be a little kludgy and maybe there's not a management path for it or some other integration. So it can kind of be hard to manage. But the idea here is that these agents are already on a lot of your devices for SCOM. Those agents are already, already pulling that information in SCOM that gets forwarded out to operations management suite. And then that gets combined contextually with the rest of your environment, right? Uh, whether it's VMs in Azure or some other cloud, for example, um, as well as networking, network uh, logging, security logging, and, and so on. So really brings everything together, and it's super easy to enable this. If you already have SCOM out there, you just turn this feature on for operations management suite, you log in with your subscription, and you just target the devices that you want to have forwarding events, and it's pretty quick to get that moving forward. Uh, Linux too. So Linux, it's funny because Microsoft is now embracing this kind of open source world now, especially on Linux side of things. You know, that was not the type of thing that Microsoft was really into before. They were kind of dipping their toe in a little bit. ESCOM can kind of do some stuff with Linux, you know, and some of the other system center products can kind of do it. But in the cloud, they're making sure that Linux is a first class citizen. And in this way, there's actually a way that you can basically take up that information, your logs, your analytics from your Linux devices and forward them directly to operations management suite. And this can be done with an, kind of like an agent here, or um, it can be done, and I'll show you how this works uh, within Azure. You can just seamlessly enable this forwarding service to your workspace for OMS, um, really simply, uh, which is a great value add. You can do that, put that into your VM templates, or do that manually, like I'll show you to illustrate that in the, in the UI. And again, to illustrate that point of a lot of different distributions of and flavors of Linux that are supported here, um, I, it, it goes back pretty far. So as long as you're on a more or less modern version of Linux, you're, you're pretty much gonna be covered from a supported Linux platform. 
Like I mentioned before, so the REST collection API, this is an API that takes your custom data from applications, servers, other, I mean, services, anything that you can think of really that works with REST API and uses JSON document formats in order to pull that information in in a custom way. And there are, there's so much you can do with this, so customized. It really, as long as you can get it in a JSON format and have it just, just in this standardized uh, format, you can pull that into OMS and start getting some insights, some alerts, notifications, that type of stuff. So sky's the limit truly there as well. I'm getting to leveraging existing management platforms. You said you pull in from operations manager. It's pretty simple. You just open the operations management suite, onboarding wizard, associate with your OMS subscription. Um, if you do have one more, one, more than one workspace, you just have to decide which one it is. And it's kind of it. You just say, apply this to the systems that I want to have um, connected to OMS and you're done. From Nagos and Zabbix, just kind of illustrates the point here that you can pull all this information in. Um, you, you have to grant some user rights here to access the log files um, and modify some configurations. But besides that, you know, that's to be forwarded directly onto OMS and have all this information in one centralized location. And like I mentioned before, can access anywhere with the consistent user experience. Uh, the, they continually are making this better from a, like the mobile apps especially. And with the, I'll show you later on, the console, it's very easy to use and they continue adding, can, are continuing to add solutions that are already pre-built to gain more insights and analytics from various different first party and third party uh, applications, services, clouds, that sort of thing. So it is really great, easy to read um, dashboards and you can customize that how you want as well. So let's get into gaining immediate insights. All right, so another challenge is gaining that unified experience as an IT admin because you have all these various tools for different clouds and platforms residing in all these distributed locations and services. So trying to get some sort of insight immediately right, from something that's happening or correlating that to another system that might be dependent or whatnot um, to reduce your operational time spent on issues in particular. Well, the solution here is a single pane of control to gain this insight across multiple different sources and solutions. So in the middle of everything is going to be OMS and all that information getting pulled in there, all the analytics happening, but depending on your role, you might have the different things that you care about or even have access to in terms of this information. So you can separate that by role on what information you're allowed to see and giving you a dashboard that gives you some very quick information visually of what matters to you most. So that's also a great benefit here as well. And so main thing here, quick data collection, you need to, in order to get immediate insights, you need to get that data quickly. This is automatic data collection that's happening from OMS. It's either pulling, pulling it or it's being pushed from the other side um, from the different monitoring services already or collecting logs for you on your behalf. And that's getting pulled in and processed immediately. And as well, um, there's experience sources of insight. So really this is, you're having one single source of truth and also Microsoft is helping you put all this information together, especially in these solutions, to gain this insights without having to massage the data that much. In the end, too, you can analyze petabytes of data from the cloud. The key is with the cloud, storage is pretty cheap. So Microsoft can ingest a ton of data for you on your behalf that is really, you know, it's, it's very costly to do that on-prem honestly, because storage is expensive on-prem, right? You have to have shared storage and SANS and connecting them, all that up, and it's just these huge capital investments. Whereas at a cloud scale, you can have tons of storage and controlling that from anywhere and then consistent your experience as well. 
So I have a quick data collection here. Automatic data selection collection, where it's a lot of analytics will connect to your connected sources that you establish and pull all this data in to the, to the OMS repository. This is all stored as a set of records and each type of record has its own property, so it might be looked at or compared or contextually a little bit different, but it's all standardized. And that's, you know, across logs, performance counter, performance counters or built-in solutions that is all being pulled into one place. You know, then how I have custom log collection. So besides the standard logging like Windows event logs or sys logs, you can determine which other logs you might have. These might be very specific custom application logs or whatnot uh, that you just define those properties and those custom, using custom fields, which then allows that data to interact with your, your other data. At that point, too, you're seeing a lot more uh, kind of a movement towards containers here, especially from a DevOps perspective and modern applications where these are essentially lightweight pared down virtual machines and can be very easily provisioned. We're seeing things like Docker is a, is a major solution that this is being used with. And you can have can, per container monitoring directly with OMS just as a first party solution here. So that's really kind of illustrates the point of how Microsoft is moving forward very quickly with innovation in the space and, tr and tracking very closely where most organizations are going from a management and infrastructure perspective. So this, for those traits the point here with containers is that you can correlate millions of logs from Docker with all these containers at scale because the idea of containers is they're very small and you might have a lot of them. So with traditional management monitoring solutions that can be really difficult to keep your eye on that and uh, really get the right insights from that data, especially since containers, the idea is that they can be disposed of quickly and something can be set up right behind it, right? A new version or something, for example. So this really helps um, with that is if, you're going, if your organization is going forward with containers. So now from experienced sources of insights, um, a single source of truth from the, all the data centers and clouds and correlating all that information that Microsoft and their product teams and other teams are providing for you. So you start with solutions. So solutions are these built in um, kind of analytics in a way that in the end, everything that's getting pulled in, into OMS, is just these locks. It's just these whole bunch of locks, but Sometimes it can be kind of difficult to build your own solutions to get the right insights from there. So Microsoft has been, you know, over time building these solutions to give you immediately kind of built-in insights into this data in the areas that you select. So you'll see things here, AD assessment. That one is a great one that takes a whole bunch of best practices and knowledge and uh, items that Microsoft deems as importance. It might be in a whole bunch of their documentation that you could look up and you could try to create your own solution around that, but they pulled it all in the solution where if there is an issue, if there is something that's not configured properly, that something's broken, it will bring that information to you very quickly, which is not something that's very easy to do on your own if you're just kind of looking at the symptom of something that's happening and then trying to track back to the issue. This is also, this is looking deeper at the issues and configuration that might create a symptom that you might not be seeing quite yet and maybe even proactively allow you to get in front of that. There's other things too like your backups we talked about the last um, webinar here is that it'll give you some insights into your backups, your backup agents. You're seeing things like Office 365, Azure Site Recovery. Um, we'll dig into a couple of these other ones later on. But again, this is all in one single pane of glass. And all this information and all this, this experience Microsoft has is, is built in here for you. Just click a button and enable it. And like I said, third-party solutions are, are being brought into here as well. In particular, you might be surprised to see VMware monitoring, right? You, you think that they're, you know, Microsoft and VMware might be enemies, but in the end, Microsoft knows that 
A lot of organizations use VMware, so they really don't want to exclude organizations from getting these, these analytics and insights from the systems that they're using. And because VMware is used at a very large scale still in, in many environments, they've made it easy to pull in this information and see that side by side with the rest of the monitoring information that, they, that they're bringing in too. So, and here's from a solution perspective, this is just an example of a, just a JSON file, right? For a solution document just shows, you know, where it's connecting to, it's where it's storing the log files um, and, you know, referencing the resources, that type of thing. So just gives you an idea. I mean, you can create your own solutions if you wanted to, um, just using a JSON format. And also another, you know, solution that is, you might be surprised is that you can do AWS monitoring natively with OMS, right? So that can be, you want all your information from Azure, which obviously OMS does do very well, but you want to have that information from that cloud side by side with the other clouds that you're using. Maybe it's AWS and be able to see that in one place, not to have to have all these different monitoring solutions that you have to log into separately. Um, and this is specific to AWS CloudWatch. You are focusing on monitoring and yeah, log analytics is the main piece, but then you can get into using run books and alerts. Um, so yeah, gives you an idea there. And this is an example of what that dashboard might look like. You see that little uh, kind of donut uh, graph there on the top left that just is one of those visuals that you might put into your primary dashboard to let you know if you're having any problems um, immediately or there's something that you need to be taking a look at. And then you can dig in and keep drilling down into more and more specific information. But all of these panes here are all, they come built in. You just connect this with your AWS services and all this information starts pulling in for you. Not really too much time to get this set up. And now to, to storage um, at cloud scale here, this is, the infrastructure is free, right? You do not have to pay for the servers. You do not have to maintain them and patch them. It's a service, so that's a huge benefit versus a lot of on-prem monitoring solutions. Um, and it is on the fly metrics aggregation, so it's doing a lot of compute in the background, pulling all this information together to aggregate results. And another great thing that's now included is Power BI integration. So going even beyond what you can get in the OMS console, you can do all the great things you can do with Power BI and really manipulate that data and, and provide other insights outside of um, of OMS in ways that you might share and create reports and uh, get that information out to others in your organization without them having to go into the OMS console and have the rights to do that. And here, you know, showing that you can customize the views here. There's a designer creating your tiles and the different types of graphs based off the events that you want. Again, very customizable. You make it your own. And again, you can create these types of uh, visualizations here based off your needs and create a, a dashboard that works for you. All right, so let's get into fast troubleshooting and auto remediation. This is really the, the end goal here. Where the problems that we see, you know, that customers have today, especially with all these diversified solutions, is getting this unified experience um, with all these multiple tools, all these different clouds, and being able to quickly uh, remediate issues. Or have an issue that is in one location, but it has, you know, it's an application issue. All right, you go to application monitoring, uh, but, oh, well, I guess maybe not application, maybe it's networking, so you have to go talk to that team or get access to that console to see what's going on and manually try to correlate those events and the timing that is happening. And maybe there's some security things that happen at the same time, and how is this working? How, how do you contextually understand what's going on, especially when you're having alerts coming from all these different systems? Um, it's unclear, how do you proceed and remediate this? So, um, with Microsoft and OMS, the idea is that it is filtering the alerts for what's important, specifically, you know, based off of that search alert that you are, that you care about, and is tying that together with professional knowledge that Microsoft is bringing to the table, and they're constantly adding more of, and community-based knowledge, in order to give you 
insights, best practices, you know, not just giving you an alert, but giving you information on how do you actually go about reading this? Because what Microsoft is doing, there's a lot of knowledge that they gain from just customer support. I'm talking to many, you know, tens of thousands of customers daily with support calls. And, you know, they identify a support issue. They track it back to, well, the root cause was you should have had in this configuration with this server version and this .NET version and this particular, just all these variables lined up this particular way. You need to make this configuration change so you don't have a blue screen, for example. Well, that's really, really hard to communicate out to everybody because it's a very specific information, you know, a situation where you can't just go to some doc somewhere. They can't just publish all of this because it's very, very unique situation that might cause a problem. But they've seen that in every instance where it's, you know, A, B, and C are the variables. And it's always it's the same there. You always get this other result, which is, you know, something broken. But if you go back and you fix this one thing, everything's fine for all customers. So what Microsoft's doing is they're looking at the configuration here with through your OMS, they're looking at your server configurations and other areas and saying, does your configuration match what the support teams, customer support teams have put into their knowledge base as a, a specific environment situation where it would cause a problem? Maybe this is proactively, it hasn't happened yet, but you are in a state which they have seen many problems. And all you have to do is just tweak a little registry key or update one little component and you can prevent many things from happening. So not only from a reactive standpoint, but from a proactive standpoint, they can identify these for you, which is just, it's just almost impossible to do otherwise um, on your own. And Microsoft doesn't make a lot of this information public because it's hard to communicate that out. So you can get this real-time knowledge here that things that Microsoft identifies as being potential issues. And as well, if there is an issue that does come up and it does match some criteria that they define, there's a lot of times, most of the time, there is some KB article that you can link you to for a hot fix or you know, make this configuration change or whatever else. But this is actually knowledge that they're communicating to you through this. And that's why this goes beyond SCOM because SCOM, it doesn't connect any knowledge base, really. It's just, okay, there's an error here. <laughs> you know, Maybe there's a little bit of built-in knowledge, but it's might be a little dated, right? And those management packs, it's like, ah, okay, yeah, I have to track that down and figure it out. Well, this is real time. When you connect to OMS, you get this additional uh, just base of knowledge that you can correlate to any sort of issues and proactively help as well. So I just can't stress that enough. It's the, probably the biggest uh, value of, of OMS in this log analytics. So getting to fast troubleshooting and, and auto remediation here, you typically have some SLAs, whether that's internal or external SLAs, right? And time is money. So the longer that you wait, or longer it takes for you to identify the issue, like you get a call in or something reactively, you identify, okay, there's, it seems to be in this area, we're diagnosing everything, we're trying to find root cause, and then we need to go in and remediate. All that time, right, that is spent, and that's, I mean, that's operational dollars for, for your, you know, DevOps team potentially. Um, that, that could be productivity loss if it's internal. Somebody can't get their work done because something's down. Um, and externally, maybe it's some customer facing site or something uh, service that is down and you are not able to provide world-class customer service to your customers. So the longer it takes for you to identify that issue and get it resolved is just more money right, that, you're, that it's costing you. So with this, the idea is that you can identify this root cause very quickly with the powerful search because everything's in one place. You can set notifications on searches that you've already previously done. Like save a search based off of something that you see and say, I want to know next time that that happens. Click a button, and you'll be notified next time. So you can immediately know when it, you know, a situation should arise again. And then community-based solution automation as well. Uh, that's where uh, there's a community of PowerShell uh, scripts that you can just tie into your some runbooks for automation. We'll get into this automation in one of the, the later um, series, one of the later episodes of the series here. But in general, this is how this all ties together is that you have something that happens in the logs. You can say, when this happens, not only alert me to this, but I want you to run a PowerShell script that's gonna actually remediate that immediately. 
and maybe that alert you know goes to email or maybe it goes into your ITSM and just is logged as a ticket. The automation runs with the run book, it validates that it's that it's resolved and the ticket closes all without you having to do a thing and you didn't even have to get up at 3 a.m. when that issue happened, right? Um, so that's huge. And that's a good starting point with a lot of these um, PowerShell run books. And you can create your own too, right? Build off of those, build your own. And that's where it gets, yes, the auto, auto remediation based off of those triggers. You can take actions uh, based off of those alerts, auto remediate, and you get to sleep more when you're on call. So a lot of that too, right, is it identifies an issue, maybe before the user identifies it. Because how many of you are just waiting, your help desk is just waiting for somebody to, to log a, a support request because something's not working. Whereas if you can get ahead of that, just think of how that, if you can get ahead of that and identify that issue before the users, internal or external, identify that, you can automatically remediate that, create that ticket, close the ticket, that user will never know, right? And you'll have so many less help desk tickets because of that much better experience for your end users and for your customers. So with identifying the root cause, it really comes out of this alert management, right? And identifying these alerts of something that's gone wrong based off of some data that you're getting coming into OMS from all these different sources. And you can set those alerts again to set, you know, you can say that these are informational warning, critical, um, assign them to different people to remediate those maybe manually if you don't have a runbook already, um, send out the emails, they open a ticket in your ITSM system. Filter these, right? Showing filtering these alerts here. So let's take a look at all alerts that we have, not just the active ones. And there's some that aren't necessarily actionable. Maybe they're just informational and you just want to know about. Um, so let's click on that, showing, clicking on that first one here. I want to see a high CPU on a specific group of computers. And you can see, click on that, immediately gives you a visualization here of a graph based off of that performance. And it looks like the thresholds that you set, there are certain time periods in which that CPU has gone, you know, and triggered that alert. So you can click into that, you can see which system that is. In this case, it does show the specific resource name here, which is a, a particular server. So you can see when that's happened, and then you can pivot into that and get other information about what was happening during that time. Was there a change made? Was there something else? You know, what service was actually running and, and particularly maybe taking up all the CPU so you can understand what's going on there. Either take auto remediation um, when that happens again to do something there, or maybe you feel like, okay, I think we just need to increase the CPU on, on this particular server. And so getting into the community-based automation, so all these great PowerShell scripts that so many people have been contributing to the community, you can pull in directly. I mean, this is literally in the OMS console, you say, I want to add a run book, and you click a button, and it shows up right here. Now, you can go to this PowerShell gallery on your own through a web browser, but this is nice because you can filter these and search through these, uh, these run books, these PowerShell workflows and whatnot, right within the OMS console without having to go anywhere else and bring them right into your in your solutions. So a couple things here, right? It's just some easy ones. Let's stop some virtual machines so that they're not costing us money, maybe on a schedule, but then let's start them back up again um, at a certain time during the day. So that's just a good example there. Those are some popular ones. Um, would encourage you to take a look through that PowerShell um, community gallery for all the other awesome things that people have come up with. Save you a lot of time, honestly. And really, when you talk about cloud, cloud is about having these insights. Cloud, it, it's it's kind of like this uh, philosophy in a way, and people have different ideas about what cloud means to them. But to be truly cloud, you have to be able to have these insights into what all your cloud resources are, what they're doing, having this governance of all your resources, as well as being able to automate. You have to be able to automate. You're not truly cloud unless you have automations. So in this scenario, right, automation is remediating against issues that come up. And so when you create these alerts, you can then say, all right, I want to be able to do something when there's an alert. I don't want to just have to log into the console and be like, oh, look, there's an alert. 
I want something to actually happen, right? So it could be uh, that uh, these alerts are emails. It could be that it's a webhook to, you know, to Slack, for example, and creates a, a message in, in, in your channel for, for that. Uh, it could be tied in your ITSM system, creates a, a ticket for you, or really in this case is tying into some run books and actually doing something to remediate. So here's an example of what an alert rule looks like. So you give it some information, you say what severity this is, and this is based up a search query. So you might have built a search query already, kind of tested it out and said, I want to save this search query, and I want to use that as an alert. So then that's why this comes up here. You say, I want to know, you know, what is it, the time window which we're looking here. In this case, we're looking at a malicious IP and remote IP country based off of wire data and the outbound internet or network traffic. And they want we want to measure that count by computer. So the syntax of this of searches are is actually really straightforward. So it's looking every 15 minutes is a time window here and the alert frequency. So you check for this alert every every five minutes. And then you can de determine the frequency if it happens, let's see, I want to know if this happens more than a couple times every minute, then you can have that threshold. In this case, it's like, I want to know everything that happens here. So that's why it says greater than zero. You can have that email notification. You can then tie in that webhook with a Slack or some other system that you can tie in with JSON and other APIs. And then you have the option here of runbook. So with runbook, you hit yes and select the runbook that you've already kind of uploaded to OMS and determine whether that's going to run out of Azure or if that's going to run out of uh, a hybrid worker that's on-prem, for example. So that's something, like I said, we'll get into that in a later webinar here and with IT automation. So just kind of sum up what we've learned here. Um, actually, you know what, before I do that, let me just jump into the console, give you a little bit of a live uh, demo here of what some of this looks like. Let me just get that going. All right. Pull this in over here. Hopefully that'll rescale properly. Okay, cool. So this is a view of my dashboard here. This is just a test environment. Uh, but I enabled a handful of servers in my in my Azure environment with this agent to so start pulling information. Some of these solutions I just put here for say illustrative purposes, just to show that they are here. Um, I may not have everything going on. Like I don't think I have a SQL server, so I don't have any data coming into that, for example. Um, but like alert management, we talked about alerts here. Wait, I do have 25 alerts. Now I think some of that was, it wasn't connecting to my Power BI. Oh, I do have another one here. We have actually computers missing security updates. So that's kind of important, right? So we can see here, here's some common alert queries that we can turn into an alert specifically and send an email notification or do a runbook on, but let's say computers meet some missing security updates. So as you can see, it's just a search is really all this is. And it tells me here, here's the alert, here's the time generated. Uh, maybe I want to have a list here and I want to show more, you know, what's happening here. And it's telling me that I have, I have a computer that's, that's missing that. Uh, let's see if I can click into here. I have another view I can we can jump into actually. So we might go into the the solution here, which is looking at our updates. So update management. It's showing that one of my Linux systems does need a at least some updates, right? So my Windows computer, I have one Windows computer. Looks like that's showing that it doesn't need any updates there, but my Linux one does, and there's 66 updates. Uh, and so we can go into the, the system itself or into updates specifically. So if we go into the system, we can see all these different updates, what they look like. And there's even sometimes contextual views here of what we're looking at and in terms of the age of the updates and some other information. So that's just a quick and easy way to, to kind of navigate that. A couple other things to note here. So the AD assessment, this is AD assessment, SQL assessment. These are some of the, just the best pieces of knowledge that you can get here. Um, we just jump into AD assessment. So it's looking at 
all the configurations, the best practices, what's happening in your AD environment, SQL wise. And for example here, it'll give you different weightings in terms of how important these things are and prioritize these recommendations for you. So I should configure the, poop, the, the root PDC emulator here uh, to use an authoritative time source. It's saying that's what I should do. But not only does it tell me I should do that, it tells me exactly what to do, you know, with all the command lines and all this context here so that you know, okay, yeah, this does apply to me and I know exactly what I need to do. And it also gives you links to other you know, sources here for KB articles, for example. So extremely powerful, a lot of information that you just, it's very hard to find otherwise if you're being reactive. This is being very proactive here. Anti-malware assessment, right? So you might have systems that are not under, you know, within your domain, for example. So they don't have, there's, it's hard to understand whether those systems have malware management on them if they actually have anti-malware. So this helps you to understand which systems may or may not have that if they're on or off your domain, for example, and digging into those. In some situations, I think they're increasing the capabilities here for Linux, but at least the Windows side um, and using Windows Defender or you know, SCEP, the System Center Endpoint Protection, it can actually pull in what threats have been identified right into here. So again, a, a centralized place you get this information. You can think of like a security officer getting a dashboard and seeing this all this information across all clouds, all servers in one place um, so that they can take action on that quickly. Other things of note here, um, security and audit. So in terms of accounts that are being used, uh, tracking down logins on which server, which domain controller, when, from where, there's some great things we're gonna get into that or security and compliance uh, webinar here and one of the last parts of this series. Other activity logs from Azure, auditing, right? Uh, wire data, looking at everything that's happening over the wire, uh, networking-wise, that you can trace down to you know, the exact IP address at the exact time, what happened, correlate that with other information that Microsoft provides from the intelligent security graph of malicious sites that you might be contacting inadvertently, botnets, what have you. Change tracking, that's huge too. So all these things that are changed on, on your servers, this is all being analyzed and uploaded here. And this is showing, you know, maybe there was an issue. You can correlate these changes to issues. So you can get this all in the context of the time period that something happened. And maybe, you know, a server rebooted, we didn't know why. It happens to be looked back here and it's because CPU went crazy because of a specific service. Let's say a backup service that went you know, haywire and, and took up all the CPU until everything timed out and the, and the system crashed. But you can dive in here and see, all right, well, what services are happening and when? And you can look at, okay, a specific server. You can filter it down to where well, you want to see what the type of uh, service was that changed. And you can get some insights into here very, very deeply. Um, and the last couple of things I want to mention here is there's some other third-party services as well that you'll see, which are interesting, like Office 365, um, as well as Windows. So you'll see something called Windows Analytics. That's actually a free service, completely free, that um, you can use for understanding your upgrade readiness to, to Windows 10 and to stay compliant on all your updates and even your Windows Defender um, definitions, getting a centralized view of that for once you get to Windows 10 and you're going forward. So I don't have any systems that are necessarily hooked up there right now. Um, but let's get, so Office 365, you get all your audit information from there, anything that's that's changed or somebody's made, um, you know, made some configuration changes, for example. But I do really love Windows Analytics. I have a feeling I'd love to do another webinar on just Windows Analytics by itself. It's a very powerful, powerful, a uh, free tool that Microsoft is developing quickly and innovating on. So identifying the apps that are on your, on your Windows clients, um, resolving issues from those are known issues from other customers from Microsoft or the vendors where they know that these applications or drivers will not work uh, when you get to Windows 10. So being able to identify that and remediate that ahead of time, um, being proactive, and then identifying the systems that are eligible to deploy Windows 10 and even syncing that back with Config Manager so that you can say, yep, these systems are ready. Put them in the collection, and the next round, 
go ahead and upgrade them. Also gets deep into the office add-ins to see you know, which ones are out there and being able to kind of rationalize those and what tests you need to do. And site recovery, or site discovery is built in here too to see maybe what type of intranet sites people are visiting, making sure those are compatible with like IE 11 or Edge um, so that you can really streamline your testing, um, prioritize your testing and do some rationalization. I love this tool. Um, so this is the upgrade rating side. And like I said, there's an update compliance. So I won't get too deep into those. Just want to give you kind of an idea of what this looks like. Now, the other side of this here is onboarding, right? So onboarding, if we go to blog analytics side of in the Azure Blade and the new Azure portal, we click on the workspace. I'm not sure why mine is a quid, but it is. Uh, and here is your OMS workspace, right? So you're going to get some information here, just some overview about what's happening. You're going to see here pricing tier. So this is free. I'm on the free one. You get a 500 megabyte daily limit and a data retention of seven days. So you can try this out today. Um, you know, you just stand up a free subscription with Azure. You stand up this free pricing tier here with OMS. And this is not a limited time trial. This is forever free. Now, what will happen is, like I said, storage is super cheap. So Microsoft will actually store all of your uh, your logs or whatever you send it, they'll store it, right? They're only gonna retain it for seven days um, on this free plan. But what costs money to Microsoft and cloud providers mostly is the processing power, all that processing in the back end, actually doing something with that data and bringing you the insights and the analytics. That's why there's that 500 megabyte limit when it's free. You pay for other ones, uh, you, you get some more higher limits of how much data is ingested and the retention. So anyways, go to virtual machines here. And uh, you'll see, yeah, you have some errors on some of these here, but this is where I have um, this workspace, this OMS workspace connected to these systems, these virtual machines in my Azure subscription. So you'll see WinServ SRV1 is one that we saw on some of those logs. That, there's that guy. Here's my Linux backup. That's the guy that was kind of a, didn't have all his updates, right? Um, it's as easy as if you just have a system you can click on that system that's in your subscription. You click connect. And in the background, it'll integrate this agent into your system without any admin privileges needed. Um, as long as you have access to these virtual machines in your Azure subscription, it can tie this into that workspace just like that. And this doesn't have to be manual like this. This can be done from a PowerShell script. You can have an automation going even for this. Is there anything that's in this resource group that's a VM? Make sure that it has, you know, uh, it's being added to my workspace for OMS. Or you can, if you have VM templates, or the, you know, Azure resource templates, you can add this in as one of the things that gets configured when you create a new virtual machine. So it's super easy for onboarding when you're in Azure. Um, again, just an agent typically in other servers that are either on-prem that are not covered by SCOM or in other clouds. All right. So kind of running low on time here, uh, but hopefully this is a good, a good thing for you can see here. Uh, the portal is uh, MMS, portal at MMS at Microsoft.com for the OMS side here. Otherwise, in Azure, of course, portal.azure.com, sign up for a free trial, and you can start playing with that today. All right, so to recap here on what we've learned, showed how there's, with OMS and Insights and Analytics, you get a simple unified experience, right? That single pane of glass using all your existing uh, platforms, accessing it from anywhere. Capability of gaining immediate insights because of all this quick data collection that's being um, compiled and aggregated by Microsoft with essentially unlimited amount of storage in the back end for you. And you get these trusted insights and all this knowledge that can't be communicated easily in any other real way here than here. And then lastly is that troubleshooting faster and remediating automatically, identifying those root causes and, you know, you should only have to deal with an issue once because you, you get that issue, you get that alert, you set a run book to auto remediate and you won't have to deal with that ever again. So how can Core Tech help? So we do a lot of services around Azure in general, management, infrastructure. We can help with proof of concepts, planning, pilots, deployments. We do some cloud foundation engagements, which have been really valuable, honestly, as we come in and help you understand your cloud strategy 
set up that foundation so that you can get off on the right, you know, start off on the right foot and won't have to come back and rework a lot of different configurations and, and setups that you've done by using our expert cloud solution architects. In a lot of situations here, um, Microsoft, depending on your organization and your size and a few other factors, there's typically some funding that we have the capability of using to help you get through some of these um, areas that has been really helpful to help the organizations move forward quicker. And, and Microsoft is willing to help with that. So um, definitely let us know, you know if that's something that you'd be interested in. So let's get to Q&A here. All right, so um, at this time, we're gonna open it up for questions. Um, so if you guys have any questions, uh, go ahead and you can either type them in the question box. Um, there's also a chat window and we, we have both open. Um, so we're gonna give it just a few minutes and uh, go ahead and, and type uh, any questions that you guys have in. Uh, first one is not typically a question. They just said, uh, please do the Windows Analytics webinar. Okay. So um, yes, we will we'll do that one in the future. We'll be sure to send that um, the invite out for you all. Hot topic these days. So yeah, yes. I'll make that happen. Yes. Um, and then we have another question that said, um, how do we find out if we are eligible for the Microsoft funding for the Windows, or the, I'm sorry, the cloud opportunities? So, um, most organizations are now <laughs> actually and so but you have to work with a partner that's qualified as well and that's who we are we actually can cover pretty much all customers even if they're not managed by by microsoft um and there's at least like a day that we can do but oftentimes up to a week or more um depending on your size and, and what you're targeting so um and I'll, I'll put this up on the screen so you have this guy for everybody too but you know contact us send, send me an email um, we can check your eligibility. We'll just have a quick conversation to see if you qualify and, and determine if that's a good fit for you. So good question, good question. And actually, here's a, our question here is, uh, can we integrate with a SIEM? There's also a security information event monitor, I believe, or manager, I guess it is. Uh, yeah, so since you can put those logs in a common event format and as long as you can get in that format and get it into uh, OMS, throw it right into Azure storage. Yes, absolutely. You can pull all that in there or you can go the other way around and you can, if you're using your SIEM as kind of like that centralized alert mechanism, you can send those alerts to your SIEM too. So it's kind of bi-directional in a lot of ways. So that's a, that's a good question. And another question about pricing too. So yeah, like I mentioned, there's a free tier. Um, you can do pay as you go and you can, there's different plans like one for uh, 30 days, of retention with a limited amount of um, upload of data, log data, and then there's one for um, one year of retention as well. So those are pay as you go, and it's all per node. So think of a node as you know one a network monitoring system might be one node really, um, but each VM would be another node. Each um, our other monitoring services might be another node. So that's how that's worked out. And there are packages that give you a sweet and much better pricing if you're looking at more than just the logging analytics and backups or security side of things, automation. Um, they can save you a lot of money in that too. Check out that first um, overview webinar that we did. I think I dug a little deeper into the licensing options there, but yeah, if you have any other questions about that, please just let me know. Um, and we have another question. Um, you mentioned two more sessions for the OMS webinar. What will those topics cover? Good question. Good leading question there. So, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, we did the overview, we did the um, kind of the disaster recovery and backups. The second one today, we did the insight analytics. And the other two that are left over for those uh, kind of pillars of, of OMS is going to be security and compliance, which is a big deal these days and a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. So, that'll be next. And then we're going to finish up with IT automation. And I think we might bring in a guest speaker. Um, we recently brought on a a Microsoft MVP onto our staff who is just great with DevOps and automation. He's doing a lot of cool stuff. So I want to try to take that opportunity to show off some of that cool stuff to uh, for all you guys. So be on the lookout for that as well. That's awesome. All right, so I'm not seeing any more uh, questions come in. 
Um, so uh, again, thank you for joining today's webinar. Um, we'll send out the recording so you guys have that available. Um, keep your eyes peeled for the additional uh, invites for the last two sessions that we'll be covering. Um, we'll also send out the uh, previous uh, sessions uh, links to those recordings so you guys have those available. Uh, Chris, any last comments? No, I think that's, I cover a lot of stuff here. I know it's kind of like a fire hose, but that's why we had those opportunities. If you want to, you know, get with us and have some more questions, want to dive deeper POCs, that's the time to really uh, sink your teeth into that. And we have great experts that can help you on your cloud journey. Phenomenal. Well, thanks everyone. Um, have a great rest of your day and we'll see you at the next session. Thanks.